Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome to today's children's message for February 26, 2023, Unit 18, The People Prepare, from Session 5, We Should Be Sorry for Sin, Romans 8. Welcome back, friends, and I want to say today is our last unit in the Old Testament. We will be going into the New Testament starting next week, so welcome back. You know, worshiping God together is such a a gift, you know, God created us to live and worship him in community. And I love getting to participate in worship with you every week. One thing I really love is getting invitations in the mail for a special party. Have you ever gotten an invitation? What was that for? When I get a, an invitation, I know that there will be a special celebration coming up. Parties aren't a time to sit around and be sad. They're a time for rejoicing. And in our Bible story today, we're going to hear about an invitation that God extends to us to believe in Jesus and receive true life with him. It's the most amazing invitation we will ever get. You know, over the last few weeks, we've been answering our big picture questions. How should we feel when we sin? When we sin, I know you know the answer. When we sin, we should feel sorry that we have disobeyed God and want to turn from our sin because we love him. It's right for us to feel sorry over our sin. But you know what? Jesus turns our sorrow into rejoicing as he frees us from that grip that sin has and gives us life with God forever. You know, Christ has come to show us a new way to live in this world. He guides us as we follow him in obedience to God. Not, no, we won't do this perfectly, but there is grace for us every step of the way. The life Jesus invites us to is incredible. It's free from guilt that sin brings, and he gives us joy and peace to be with God. So let's hear more in our Bible lesson we should be sorry for our sins. And this is the picture right here. And it's from Romans 8. And Romans 8, of course, is in the New Testament. You know, over and over in the Old Testament, God's people promised to be faithful. God gave his law to show what he requires. But again and again, the people failed to obey perfectly. They rebelled and they turned against God. Even when they wanted to obey, they could never be good enough. No matter how hard they tried, and this sin made them feel guilty before God. They needed help. They needed a Savior. And at the right time, God kept his promise to send a Savior. Jesus came to rescue sinners. You know, sin is powerful. But Jesus is even more powerful than sin. And a believer named Paul wrote about sin in a letter to the Christians in Rome. Paul said that Jesus was the Savior that people had been waiting for. This is what Paul said. There is no condemnation, no judgment or punishment for those who have been saved by faith in Jesus. Why? Because of the new law. The law of the Spirit has set you free from the old law. The old law brought sin and death. God sent Jesus to defeat sin and death so that we could be made right, righteous by his faith and live with, through the Spirit. And God has put that new law in our hearts. The new law brings us life and peace. So Paul talked about two ways of living. Living by doing what our sinful self wants to do or living by what God wants us to do. Since Jesus frees us from the power of sin, we can say no to sin. God gives us his spirit and the power to live in a way that honors God. Paul wanted to be clear. Being not guilty before God does not mean we should keep on sinning. God's spirit gives us the power to turn away from sin and obey God. And when we let the spirit lead us. We prove to be children of God. God doesn't change something in us. He changes us. He gives us a new heart, new desires, and a new way of thinking. And this is the miraculous gift from God. 
We still struggle with sin, but now what is most true about us is not that we are sinners, but that we belong to Jesus. Isn't that great? You know, our sin makes us feel guilty before God. Over and over again in the Old Testament, we see people, God's people failed to obey his law perfectly. And that's just like us. We failed to listen to God and obey him. But then Jesus came to rec rescue us from our sin. And God kept that promise. He said, you know, I'm going to send a rescuer. I'm going to have him bear your sins and save you from your sins. And that's what Jesus came to. He took the punishment for the sins that we deserve. And then God gives us his spirit. And we are made new. When we trust in Jesus, God gives us a new heart, new desires, a new way of thinking so that we can follow him. You know, God's word, God's word in the Bible shows us what is right and shows us our sinfulness. And when we sin we should feel sorry that we have disobeyed god and want to turn back from our sins toward god in love because we love him and the bible tells us that the punishment for our sin is death but jesus but god sent jesus to take that punishment we deserve jesus died so we would not have to because of jesus we have forgiveness of sin and eternal life when we give our lives to Christ. We are welcome into God's family. And God gives us his spirit so that we can become righteous like Christ. Hating sin and loving to bring glory to God and honor to our Father. He changes us from the inside out, helping us to know him and desire to live for him. He sets us free from our old way of living and giving us a new life with Jesus. God enables us to live in that new life he intended for us all along. He lets us experience true joy and peace with him. And what an incredible gift that is. Now, let's think about this. How can I kind of explain this in terms that maybe you might understand? Have you ever made a trade with a friend? Maybe you traded a dessert or a candy bar or maybe even Pokemon cards. Did you know that Jesus offers to make a trade with us. Before we, we come to Jesus, we are stained like this dirty t-shirt I have here. See this dirty t-shirt here? It's got dirt, dirt smudges and everything on it. And that's like us. You know, there's nothing. I'm gonna put this dirty t-shirt on one of my dolls here. So. So that's like us when we're covered in sin. When we are covered in sin, we are filthy and dirty. And you know, we try to make ourselves clean. I try to clean this shirt and bleach it and make it come clean, but nothing can make it clean. It won't go back to the original way. And that's just like us. We can't get rid of our sin. Our sin is dirty and filthy and it fills us with that. No, ma no matter how much we try to be good, we can't get rid of the sin. But you know what? Again, but then Jesus comes in. He's perfect, like this clean shirt, this white clean shirt. And Jesus came and had this pure white shirt. He came to earth. and lived a perfect life, a sinless life that we couldn't live. He lived that life in his clean white shirt. And he came to earth and lived a perfect life, the sinless life that we couldn't live by ourselves. And in 2 Corinthians 5, 21, Jesus said, it says that Jesus became sin for us. On the cross, cross he took the punishment for the, for the sins that we deserve, God's word says that punishment for sin is death. Jesus died so we didn't have to. So he took our sins. Oh, I need to put this back on. Jesus took our sins. And when he died, he took our sins with him to death. 
and he was in the tomb for three days. And then on the third day, he came back to life and he was glorified through his resurrection. He defeated sin. And Jesus not only took away our sins, he also offers us something else. Jesus gives us his righteousness. He, he gives us his righteousness. Oh, so I'm gonna put Jesus down. I'll put the back on this one. He, this is us. Jesus gives us his righteousness so that we can be clean. So when G God looks at us, he doesn't see us. He doesn't see us. He doesn't see our disobedience and fa failures. Instead, he sees the perfect obedience of Jesus. Now, isn't that an amazing trade for us? That we get to put on this clean white shirt of righteousness and not have our sins anymore? Yeah. So, boys and girls, that's what I want you to remember, that God gives us his righteousness when we believe in Jesus. And now, we're going to take us to our Bible verses. The Bible verse that we've been practicing for the past four weeks. This is our fifth week. In his letter, Paul helps us understand that we are at war against our sinful nature. Our key passage reminds us that sin should bring about godly sorrow that leads for us to repent. Jesus offers us joy when we turn away from our sin and turn back to God. Jesus turns our sorrow into rejoicing. And God gives us peace with God forever. Our verse is, for godly grief produces a repentance that leads to salvation without regret, whereas worldly grief produces death. 2 Corinthians 7, 3, 10. Let's pray, boys and girls. Oh, Father God, you are the great God. We are so thankful for your gift of salvation. We praise you for turning our sorrow over sin into rejoicing. We want our lives to honor you and to bring glory to your name. Thank you for bringing us into your kingdom when you, you gave our lives, when we give our lives to Jesus. Thank you for Jesus dying on the cross to, to take our sins with him when he was buried and raised again and that we can put on his righteousness. And that's what you see in us, Lord Jesus. Thank you in your son's name. Amen. Amen, boys and girls. We'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.